Okay, so where we left off was we had our character and we can run, we can jump, the animations are there and we've got platforms that we can jump on top. The only thing we don't have is any interaction with the enemy which is the snail and also we left you in the last video where we wanted to populate the rest of the environment. So I placed down a couple more trees and a few more platforms all the way to the end. Okay, so that's where we left off. So what are we gonna do now? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to look at bringing in a collectible, an item that we can place in the environment so our character can run around and collect them. So if you've played Mario in the past, you'll know they they have um, gold coins or mushrooms um, and those things you collect and you can make your character better. So we're going to do something similar. The other thing we're going to do is uh, the interaction between our character and the enemies. So at the, at the moment, our game only has one enemy, but we can easily just select our character, copy them, and paste them and place them so we have more than one. So I could place a few characters along the way just to make it a little bit more difficult for the player. But at the moment, the character doesn't do anything with the enemy. So we're gonna change that and we'll probably focus on that first. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually code it so that you have some sort of interaction. When the player hits the enemy, the player then resets back at the start of the game. Okay, so we'll start with that, but then we're gonna make it more advanced by adding in lives and having a health, health system um, and things like that. So let's go over to your event sheet. And in your event sheet, we're gonna start with a simple event. So we're going to talk about when the player collides with, on collision with another object, and we're going to choose what that object is, it's the enemy, and then hit done. So that's our, that is our simple event, the player collides with the enemy. So whenever the player touches the enemy, we want something to happen. Now eventually we're gonna make it so that you have lives and you lose a life every time that happens. But for now, we're gonna make it as if it's instant death. And when your character dies, what's gonna happen is that it goes all the way back to the beginning of the game. Now to do that, we need to figure out where the beginning of the game is. So if I go back to layout one, and I just go over here, the character uh, starts the game in this area. And what I can do is, if I move my mouse in this area, what you'll also notice is on the bottom right, you'll see coordinates, mouse, and you'll see the width and height in pixels, coordinates of that position. So as I hover my mouse over here on the left side, what I wanna do is note down those coordinates. And there are two, for me, and it will probably be different for you, mine is 200 by 800. So I'm just gonna write that down on a piece of paper, 200 by 800, so I don't forget. And let's go back to the event sheet and let's add an action to the player. And basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna move them. As soon as you hit an enemy, you go all the way back to that position. So we're going to look for set position. Now, if you can't find that in the search bar, just type in the word position and then you'll be able to find it, set position. So we're gonna hit next. Now it's asking, well, what are the coordinates that you wanna set your player's position? Now I wrote those coordinates down before. So it was 200 and 800. And I'm gonna hit done. 
Now let's see if that works. So we're going to play the game. And what should happen is, as soon as I touch the enemy, I should go back all the way to the start of the game. And it did work. Okay, let's try that again. Perfect. So as I'm playing the game at the moment, we've made it a little bit harder because if you touch the snail, you actually go all the way back to the start of the game. Okay, so there we've added a little bit of complexity to our game. We've basically, what we've done is we've given our character instant death if it touches the snail. Now we want to modify this. We're going to modify the coding, but before we do that, we also want to actually bring in some images. Now, typically with games, 2D games in particular, uh, Mario's and the likes, you'll find that your lives is represented by either a bar or love hearts or something like that. What we're going to do is we're going to create those love hearts and we're going to make it so that um, they're three lives, so three love hearts. So in Photoshop, and you can do this as well. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to create it, but I think it'd be good practice, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll um, put this file in the Google Drive file, so you'll be able to get it from there as well, okay? So in Photoshop, what we're going to do is go File New, and we're going to call the file um, Player Lives. Now, this is uh, interesting, the width and height and what you want to do. Now, what I would probably do is make it uh, somewhat small. Maybe let's go with 200 pixels by 50 pixels, and we can adjust that later if we think it's too wide or too narrow. Let's um, hit OK on that. Okay, and that's the box we got. I'm just zooming in, hitting Command Plus. I think that's not too bad. We may actually change it to to a. Uh, let's go image canvas size. Let's change it to 75 height. Let's see what that looks like. That looks better. So the width is 200. The height is 75. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to draw uh, using the shapes uh, love heart. So over here on the left side, you'll see your, sh your shape, right click that, go to custom shapes, and then at the very top, you'll be able to find the shape you want. And we're looking for a love heart. Um, you can use anything you want. If you want, you can use butterflies or something like that, completely up to you. I'm just going to use a heart. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to click and drag to make a heart. Now the heart, I want it to be red. So I'll go and fill it with a, a red color and that would be perfect. What we'll do is we're going to duplicate this layer. So right click and duplicate it and we'll just call it heart two and just put it about there and we'll duplicate it again right click the layer duplicate and we'll call it heart three and we want to just evenly space them out as well okay but i'm just going to turn the background layer off so there is no background this is our full health bar um, we're going to actually right click and we're going to go to blending options on each of the layers and what we'll do is add a stroke. Now a stroke is just an outline and we'll make the stroke and I'll just zoom in so you guys can see, we'll make the stroke small, maybe something like uh, two pixels and if you want 
you can change the color to whatever you like. I'm going to make it a dark red. So it looks more like that. Now I'm going to apply the same effect onto all of them. So what you want to do is go ahead and create the same blending option, same stroke on all of your love hearts. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to show you why we're doing this. And I'll just resave the three free lives PNG file. We're going to replace the original one that we saved. Okay, so what we're going to do is, instead of actually making the heart disappear completely, what we're going to do is, we're going to remove the fill. So the fill is the inside of the layer and that way the stroke remains so it looks like yes you're definitely missing a life there so what we'll do we'll save this as two lives so we'll go save as and we'll name this two lives and we'll do the same thing drop down the fill so that it looks empty and we'll save this picture as only one life so one life one i'll just leave it as live just so there's some consistency in the naming that we have so one lives and then we also want to remove the fill on that and we'll make it zero lives make sure you're saving them as a png and also make sure that you have interlacing on okay so we'll just go back into the folder just to have a look at what we got i'll just delete that original one that we had there and rename that And I will add these into the folder. And that way, if you didn't want to create the files yourself, you can get them from the folder. Okay, let's go back into our game. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to actually code it before actually bringing in the picture. But before we do that, what we need to do is set up a variable. So before we even go in and start our coding, we need to actually tell the game what lives are. So we're gonna click on our character, and over here on the left side, you're going to see something called instance variables. And we're gonna apply that on the character. So make sure the character is selected, and then click on instant variables. We're going to add a new instance variable and we're going to call this players lives. Now you can use um, different types of uh, variables, but we're going to leave it as a number. Its initial value, we're going to um, put it to three. So we're going to say that the character has three lives at the start of the game. So this is your character's lives. You don't have to add a description, but I just put one in and I'm gonna hit okay. Um, you can't have space uh, spaces in your, in your names. So if you had a space, it will just remove that. That was what the error was that just popped up. So we'll hit okay on that. And now I've got a variable called players lives on our character. So now we're gonna actually manipulate that so we're going to add some coding and start manipulating it. So the first thing you want to do is when your game starts, you want to make sure that your character has three lives. So we're going to go add event and we're going to say for the system, whenever 
the layout. Let's actually search for it. There we go. On start of layout. So that's the event. So whenever your layout starts, so when your game starts, the player, we want their lives. So we're going to look for instant variable. So we're going to set the value of the variable. What variable is it? The player's lives. And what are we going to set it to? We're going to set it to three because that's what we want the game to start with whenever you start the game. So on start of layout, the player should always have three lives. Now, when the player collides with the enemy, what do we want to happen? We want them to lose a life. Um, so we're going to get rid of this where it says set position to 200, 800. We're going to actually, instead of deleting it for now, what we might do is maybe we can just disable it because we'll probably end up using that at the end when players' lives equals zero. So for now, whenever the player hits the enemy, what we want to happen is the player loses a life. So we're going to go to player. We're going to go to variables. And we're going to subtract from the variable. So we're going to hit next on that. And player's lives. And we're subtracting it by one. Okay, so if you had three lives, every time you hit the enemy, you're going to lose one of those lives. So we're going to hit done. Now, what will happen if my character, as they were running around, if they touch the enemy, they're going to lose a life. But what happens if my character touches and doesn't actually move away in time? What's going to happen is that little bit of code is probably going to run 10, 20, 30, 100 times until I actually move away from the character. So to ensure that you only lose one life each time you hit the enemy, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little wait button. So we're going to go and we're going to go system and we're just going to search for wait. And we'll give the character, let's say, three seconds. Enough time for it to move away before it actually subtracts from the player. Okay. So let's just move our character back to the start of the game. And before we continue, let's actually make sure that this is working. So we're going to add an event, and it's going to be a variable check. We want to check when the variable equals three. So when lives equals three, when lives equals two, when lives equals one, and when lives equals zero. So we're going to add all of those events in, and then we'll add the actions in them for them as well. So we're going to go add action on the player. We're checking the variable again. And we're going to compare the instant variable. So we're looking at when player's lives equals three, what should happen? And let's do that for all of them. So we're going to go player's lives equals to two. Let's do one for one. Player's variable, compare instance variable, the player's lives equals one. And we should also do one for when it equals zero. So we're going to go players variable lives equals zero. So there's going to be an action for each of these. For example, the picture of the hearts. Well, when players lives equals three, the picture of the hearts should show three hearts. When the players lives equals two, 
the picture of the hearts should only show two hearts, and so on. When you get down to zero, not only should it show that there's no there's no lives left, there's zero hearts left, but also our character should go all the way back to the start of the game. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to drag that one into players lives equals zero. And I'll just toggle that back on. So when players lives equals zero, the player, he'll go all the way back to the start of the game. So we're not going to worry about any of the other actions. We're just going to test this out. So basically, at the start of our game, the player has three lives. Every time the player collides with the enemy, we're going to subtract one from player's lives. So once that happens three times, the player should have zero lives, and then it should go back to the start of the game. Let's see if that works. I know there's probably some modifications we can make to the coding, but we'll just baby steps before we start adding more complex code. Let's see if it actually works. So I'm moving towards the first enemy. Let's do one touch. And then a second, oh, I've already gone back. Okay, so we may have to do something in regards to the waiting period. Let's have a look at it. So we'll go to the event sheet. Let's have a look at this. Um, <clears throat> Where it says players' lives equals zero, we're going to double click in there. We're going to change a couple of things. We're going to say, instead of equal to zero, we're going to say is less or equal. Because sometimes there might be a bug in the game and it may take more than one off our character for some reason. And in that case, then we've gone into negative digits. We've actually gone to minus one or minus two or minus three, but we don't have anything for that. We're not, we don't have a, an event that's capturing that information. So if we say is equal to zero or less than zero, then we're capturing all of the different possibilities in case it does go below zero. The other thing we're going to do over here is we need to actually set an action so that our player gets three lives again. So once they reset to the start of the game, they should no longer be on zero lives. They should have three lives. So let's go to the player and let's go to variables and we're gonna set the variable players lives back to three. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try that one again. Let's hit play on this. I'll compile the new code and let's take another stab at it. So here we are, there's one touch. Let's go to another one. There's two touches and three touches. And I'm back to the start and I can actually move around now. So that's good. It looked like it worked out. Now let's see what happens if I just stand there. Yeah. So we lost two lives very quickly. We need to just sort that out. So two lives got taken away. I wonder, I think the weight might not be working. We'll have a look at that. Okay, so the last thing we wanna have a look at is this weight three seconds. So what we might do is actually pull that above subtract one from players and let's do a quick test to see if that has fixed that problem. Yeah, it looks better. Okay, great. Okay, so there might be a, a couple of things we need to do here just to fix that up. I'm not 100% happy with the way that's working, but we'll come back to it. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to bring in the pictures of the hearts. So to do that, we're going to bring in a new sprite. So let's right click and we're going to insert a new object. The object is going to be a sprite. So let's look for Sprite. 
and let's insert that in and then click on the screen. Now down here we have our frames and normally we would right click and we would import frames and we would import a strip. But we've saved our images individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to add the frames we need and then we're actually going to import the images. So let's go to frame number zero and up here we're going to click on the load an image from a file button and we're going to go to go to zero lives we're going to place that in there and let's go to one and we're going to load that up as well we're going to go to one live and we're going to go to number two i'm going to put in two lives i'm going to go to frame number three and i'm going to put in three lives so at the moment we've got zero lives one life, two life, and three life. Okay, let's close this page. We don't need it for now. Now, I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see. There's my lives there. And what we want to do is change the initial frame. So click on the lives, and over here on the properties panel, you'll see initial frame. And we want to change that to frame number three because that has the pictures of the three lives in it. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our event sheet and we're going to hard code the picture changes. So when players lives equals three, we're going to add an action. Oh, we should have actually named our hearts as well. So over here, on the left side let's rename that let's call it lives or hearts whatever you like and then let's go back to the event sheet and let's start so when player lives equals three let's add an action on the lives and what we want to do we actually want to set a frame so we're going to go set frame we're going to go frame number three now what we're talking about with the frames, just in case you forgot, are these. And you can see they're numbered 0, 1, 2, 3. And it's perfect because frame number 3 has the 3 hearts, frame number 2 has the 2 hearts, and frame number 1 has the 1 heart, etc. So we've actually got it um, down well. So let's go to player lives equals 2 and let's add the same thing. We're going to set the frame to number 2 now. We're going to set plays lives equals one to lives set frame to frame number one. And when player lives equals zero, we're going to set the frame, frame number zero. And actually, let's pull that up to the top. All right. Let's see what that looks like in the actual game. Let's hit play. So there's our lives there. And let's go and have a look. Oh, well, one of the things is we need a HUD. And we'll look at doing that in a second. Let's just, uh, let's just hit one of these first. And let's go and have a look at our lives. And you can see I've lost the life. Let's go get hit one more time. And you can see I've lost a life. And last one. Cool. Okay, so there's a couple of issues with the weight. So we're going to have to sort that out. Okay, typically what you will do is you'll create a, another layer and you'll create a hard layer where things don't move. So, for example, we'll create a new layer here and we'll call it HUD. Now, unfortunately, if you have the free version of Construct, you won't be able to create as many layers as you want. Okay, so it is unfortunate. I'm gonna show you guys a different way of doing it. Um, but yes, typically what you would do is create a HUD, 
put anything you don't want to move. So we'll put in the HUD. And then what you'll do is actually on your HUD layer, which is really, really important, all you'll actually do in the HUD layer is we're going to turn on Parallax in Editor. So we're going to turn that on. And over here with the Parallax, normally you'd have 100 by 100. So basically saying that whatever, uh, as you're moving throughout the game, you also want your objects to move. But what we're going to say to the HUD is actually not to move at all. So we're going to go 0 times 0. So 0% 0 by 0%. And if we were to hit play, anything in that HUD layer will now actually just stay on the screen as you go through. Okay, now, although you can't do that because we have the free version, we're gonna do something slightly different. So we're gonna actually move this layer back, move a layer back to layer one. I'm gonna delete this HUD layer because in the free version of Construct, you, you only have a couple of layers that you can actually work with. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to pin it to our character. So we're gonna make the lives smaller and we're gonna bring it down to the top left of our character. You can place it anywhere you like. I might place it just there. And we're gonna set a behavior on our lives. So we're going to click on behavior, we're going to add a new behavior, we're going to add the pin behavior. Now there's a couple of other things you could use. You could use scroll two sometimes, you could use uh, you know anchor and things like that, but we're just going to use pin as an alternative. So we're going to pin as the behavior and we're going to go over to your event sheet and we're just going to look for any event so we'll just pick this one, the start of the game, the start of the layout. We're going to add an action onto our lives and we're going to look for that pin and we're going to tell it to pin to an object and we want the object to be our player. And we hit done. Now what that's going to do in our game is make the lives follow the player. So wherever we go as a player, the lives is going to follow it. Okay, it's not the best, not the most ideal. Um, however, because we don't have access to another layer, if you do, then by all means, go and create the HUD layer and put the hearts in the HUD layer and also adjust your parallax settings. So make sure parallax is on. Okay, so if we go back there, if you were to do a hard layer, click on the layer, make sure parallax is on, and then change parallax to zero, which means that it will not move as you move through your layer, uh, your, your game layer. Okay, so we've just completed our lives. We've got to set out our character. When it clicks on anything here, any of these enemies, it's going to lose a life. When it loses all its lives, it starts back at the beginning of the game. The next thing we're going to do is create some collectibles. So we're going straight back into Photoshop. We're going to create a new file and we're going to call this banana. Now you can create anything you want as a collectible. It's completely up to you. Uh, we're going to go with the width uh, 75 and the height, let's go with 200 and we'll hit OK. It's probably too big. Let's go with 150 and we'll zoom in. Okay, so 150 by 75. Could even make it a bit wider. Let's do 100. 100 by 150. Just give us enough room to work with. Now, you could go online and search for a banana and then 
edit that image and then bring it into your game. And I'm sure most people will want to do something like that where they go online and they 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 look at really cool looking um, images of something and then bring it in themselves. But we can also create it ourselves. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply just use a shape and I'm going to make it yellow. So let's change the fill. Let's make it a little bit yellow like that. And we're going to right click blending options. We're going to add a stroke like we did on our hearts. We're going to add a black stroke. And now we're going to go over here on the left side and you'll see this little arrow and we want the direct selection tool. So if you right click the arrow and hit direct selection tool, you'll now be able to actually click and manipulate some of the points here to completely change the way the shape looks. So what I want you to do is actually modify this shape and make it look more like an actual banana. I'm going to show you a couple other things you can do with these. So it's looking a little bit more bent. Now what you can do, and I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see, on the blue line that connects those dots, you can actually right click and add an anchor point. So that give you another point where you can actually stretch and manipulate things. Another cool thing about the anchor point is you've got these lines that stick out and those can be used to stretch and curve your shapes. So what we're going to do is going to use that to create the shape we want of our banana. Add as many anchor points as you like to get the look that you're after. Okay, now the next couple of things that we're going to do is just add a little bit of a dimension to it. So instead of it being a nice one uh, layer of yellow, we can actually change that. So we're going to go over here again, we're going to right click the layer and go blending options. And this time we're going to look for a color overlay and gradient overlay. So color overlay will change the color of the entire shape and you can select any color you want and it will change it. What we're looking for is a gradient overlay. So gradient overlay will basically blend multiple colors together. So by selecting gradient overlay, I'm going to actually go into the gradient here and I'm going to select two different colors. So I'm going to select that yellow that I was using before. And I'll also select a darker yellow. And a lighter yellow. And we can play around with those in a little bit. Now the other thing I want to do is change the style of my gradient, the angle and scale. And I'll show you what all three of those do. So with the style, you've got different styles of gradients and you want to find the one that best fits you. The other thing about um, selecting a different style is also play around with the angle because depending on the type of angle you create, it'll actually change the look of it as well. Scaling as well is big. So the scale of your gradient. OK, 
Okay, so I've selected linear. I've selected an angle of about 25 percent, uh, sorry, uh, 25 degrees, and a scale of about 130 percent. Now you can change this as much as you like. Play around with the different settings. Change the color of the mm -hmm. banana. Make it brighter. Completely up to you. Now, when you're happy with it, what we're going to do is remove the background and we're going to save this. So we're going to go File, Save As. I'm going to save it as a PNG image. We're going to call it Banana. Interlacing on. Perfect. So now let's bring this into our game. So we're going to go over and we're going to right click, insert new object. We're going to insert a sprite and we're going to go open and we're going to bring in that picture of the banana. Now make sure that your collision points are exactly over the banana like so. And then you can close it. One thing we want to do is actually name this and make sure we call it a banana. We'll also resize it. Once you've got your banana, what you probably want to do is now place it all over the place. So you want to copy it and then hit Command V or Control V, depending if you have a Mac or PC, and just start placing them in various places. Make some harder to get than others. Now the cool thing about placing collectibles is that you have a goal to try and achieve. Now we're going to actually add an event so that when your player touches the banana that you actually get points for these. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and add an event. We're going to add an event on the player and we're going to say whenever the player collides with another object and that object is the banana something is going to happen so let's have a look at what is actually going to happen so we're going to add an action now the first thing we probably want to do is make it so that when your character touches the banana the banana disappears so we're going to go to the banana and we're just going to do an easy thing called destroy. So search for that and then click next. So basically when the player collides with the banana, destroy the banana. So let's just make sure that's working. So let's hit play and let's go through and there's one banana and it, they are disappearing as soon as I click on them. Now they're probably a little bit too small but um, we can make them bigger. Okay. I guess just so that we can actually see them, maybe make them a little bit bigger. What we can actually also do is animate them as well, which we'll look at doing later on. Now, the next thing you want to do is actually have some sort of way of counting how many bananas that you have actually collected. So I think that's really important. Otherwise, you're collecting them for no reason. So on the top left corner, you're most likely, if you had a HUD, create a score counter. What we're going to do is maybe place it just above the hearts to follow the player. If you had a HUD layer, you would probably create your counter on the top left and you'd have a little banana icon with a number so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a text box. Now, the type of text we want is just to be displayed. So it's not that anyone's going to enter information. 
So it's under this one, under general text. So we're going to hit insert and we're just going to put on the top left here. Now for now, we're going to actually just say, uh, leave it as text. Um, later on, we might actually have an icon of a banana and then the counter comes up there. So over here, the, the name of the text is just going to be called banana counter. And we can format the text. So let's actually make it a little bit bigger. So it'll be easier to read. And let's actually create our variable. So the game doesn't know that we want to count the amount of bananas and make that a score. So we're going to click on your character and you're going to create a new variable like we do with the lives. So let's go instant variable and we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it bananas. And it's going to be a number and its initial value is set to zero because we haven't got any bananas yet at the start of the game. Now let's go over to the event sheet. And what we're going to do is at the very start of the game, we're going to make sure that text knows that it should be counting how many bananas you have. Now add an action. The action is going to be on the text, the banana counter text, because at the moment, we haven't told it to set the text to that variable. So we're going to find expressions. We're going to go to your player. And we're going to scroll down and find the variable called bananas. And let's close that and hit done. And now if we play this, oh, there you go. It's now changed to zero. Now, as I move through and I collect those bananas, it should go up. Now, at the moment, it's not because we haven't actually told the variable what to do. So the next thing we're going to do is when our player collides with the banana, we don't just want the banana to be destroyed. We also want the variable banana counter to go up. So we're going to add one to the bananas. And let's see if that works. So we'll hit play and our text is zero. So let's go collect two bananas. So there's one and there's two. And that hasn't changed. Let's see what's going on. Okay, the problem here is that at the start of our layout, it checks and sets the text to player bananas, but it doesn't continue to check and update player bananas text. So what we want to do is actually move that. We're going to create a new event and the event is going to happen all the time. So we're going to say system and we're going to say every tick, meaning all the time. So let's go system every tick and we're going to pull down that code that sets the text to bananas the players bananas and that will happen all the time now so let's give that a go i've just moved my text closer to the bananas so we can actually see it properly so there it is let's try one two and let's do three so it's perfect it's actually working great Okay, so let's actually move this text. Let's move it over here and we're going to make it smaller. Now, again, if this was, if you could have more layers and you can create a HUD, I would place this up with your lives and it would be there. If you're limited by using construct three and you're not able to create more than a couple of layers and you want a different option, then what I would do is this. And what we're going to do is actually pin it. So we're going to reduce the size of the text. We will also 
let's make it um actually we'll keep it we'll keep it black um however we'll also get one of those bananas so let's create a new sprite and let's bring in a banana we're going to name this sprite different though we're going to call it banana icon and we're going to put it next to the text and that way people understand that that's what it means and we'll just put it above the live like that now one of the things we need to do for the banana and the text is we need to add the behavior called pin. And we also need to add it on the text. And then in the event sheet, we're gonna do the same thing as we did for the lives. So we're going to pin them on our player. So at the start of the layout, we're gonna hit add action and on the banana icon, we are going to pin it to an object and that object is our player. And we're also going to do the same thing for the banana counter. We're going to pin it on our player. Now it's probably not the best thing to do. There are other workarounds around it. However, for now, we're just going to use this method. So let's hit play and see what it looks like. So there's my banana counter and my lives. And as I go through the world, my banana counter will go up. As I lose lives and as I collect more, Excellent, perfect. Oh, one thing I notice is our banana counter does not go back down to zero when you die. So let's go real quickly back to the event sheet. The last thing we wanna do is have a look at when your player loses all its lives. We set the lives back to three. We should also add an action on your bananas. Actually, it's on your player and it's the variable. So we're gonna set the value, I'm gonna set the value for your bananas back to zero. So set bananas to zero. So if we hit zero on uh, play on that, and let's just do a last minute check to see how that's going. Excellent, and if we die, back to zero. Perfect. Okay, guys, so that concludes the third tutorial, and we'll be back next. We're going to be looking at adding things like music and different game type uh, game features within here to make it a little bit more difficult. We also want to have a menu and a way of finishing the game. So, for example, when I get to the end, and I might get to something, maybe there's a treasure here or something like that down here, or well, some sort of finish, the game finishes. So we'll see you guys in the next video.